Hey, how's it going everybody? It's your favorite cow. In the new Java series and just new Java's um, catalog in general, one of his main techniques is sampling. I'm going to show you guys using day 24 of my 29 days of new Java series to show how you can take one track and gain multiple samples. Multiple samples of just one track. I just said that. You get the point. It's a really effective way to not just look for other samples, which is a, uh, another technique in and of itself, but just to get the most out of just one track and you can be surprised of the results. Let's get into it. All right, all right, all right, all right. So this is the session for day 24. Ta -da! All right, so first thing I do when I want to sample a track, I listen to the whole thing and then pick out um, different sections that I feel like I should sample, basically. So I pick everything out, listen to the whole thing, and these are the tiny little clips that I picked out. All right, after that, I slice them up to MIDI which is really easy. Well, first I pair with the markers, put them warper markers on the type of sections that I want to pick out. Slice the new mini track, right click it, easy. And from there, I play the MIDI, I play what I want to play. I kind of play it out first because I kind of want that raw, um, kind of loose feel. And from there, I freeze the bus of the MIDI chop, open up a new a new audio track. Very important to also save, or like copy what you already have in case you wanna like, you fuck up and you wanna like control Z all the way back and then you just drag it down and there. You render your MIDI chop into an MP3. And after that, I have my MP3. So these are the different chops that I have for the whole track. Chop one, chop two, chop 2.5 with a different ending, chop three, etc., cetera, et cetera. And from there, now that I have like a set MP3 file instead of just a MIDI, I can manipulate it. For example, I can reverse it or I can lower the pitch. And for this track, I kind of wanted a darker feel. So I lowered it by five, five steps for everything. Later on during mixing process, I would consolidate this whole thing, for example, like right down here, I have just one track. Now that I have my set chops, I want the low end. So I duplicate the track, I duplicate the whole bus, for example. Without this, it would just sound like the regular track, the regular chops that I already have. Okay, but with that, I put on Fab Filter, take out all the high end, just leave the low. Boost up a little bit of the, you know, lower frequencies for a little bit more punch. And that's during mixing. And I come up with this. This is just a low end. So, it's, like, I separate so it's easier for me to mix later. So I can just control the bass by itself. Hey guys, future me right here. So, quick disclaimer. I did not mention this in the video. When you're going to have, um two tracks like one for low end and one for the um regular sample you need to separate the low end from the original track one of just low end and then one without the low end and you could do that with any eq plugin ableton um stock plugin if you have fab filter etc etc so yeah one without low end one with low end so you can just control the bass please remember that don't just have both low end everything's gonna sound muddy as shit Please remember that. So, so sorry I didn't mention that. Thank you. Back to the video. Once I do that, I also have multiple other, multiple other chops, multiple other sections of the song that will serve multiple other purposes. For example, I have a, a drum fill that I found right down here, which is in the song. So it's like, I love finding drum fills in songs because then I can just put it in my own track. Or I found this um, little vocal thing and then I'll be like, oh, okay, this sounds pretty dope for me to add it as a crash. Let me just play it here for you. So by itself, everything's lowered five steps, so it's on it. But without it, oh, yeah. then I found other sections in the song that I feel like would be dope, like overlapping each other. 
So for example, like I'll have the main melody, main chop playing, but then there's another part of the song playing underneath it that I also chopped up and rendered. And let me see if I can find that. Um, it's under chops, everything's under chops here. Let me just play this whole section here. And I add this part, which is just this. And have that playing underneath. Let me see if I could find it. Yeah. Yeah, this part was uh, that little crash thing. So I just take that and down pitched it. And this is the. That's the drum fill. Oh, yeah, no, this is the. the Yeah, so I had that. Do, 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 memory. And then I had something underneath, underneath it. Um. Like as of a call and response, like woo. But anyways, I just want to play you guys just a section by itself. So you have the main sample. Okay. And add this part. Everything is in the same key. It's important. And it's called the response to this. I just love how everything is meshed together so well. So it's like important to like when you hear a track, you hear the whole thing, and you can pick out different sections that you feel like, okay, this might this might work here or this might work there. So it's not just a loop, and you're like layering your loops on top of each other. Like I said, multiple sections of the songs can serve multiple purposes. So that's how I did the sampling for day 24. If you guys want a full, full breakdown, please write down in the comments, or if you want a full breakdown of how I did the mixing for it, that's a whole nother thing in itself. And please let me know in the comments below. And yeah, if you guys like this tutorial, if you guys like the track by itself, please leave a like, subscribe, comment, share the video, Please share the video, definitely helps, and I will see you guys next time. Moo moo, out.